This video is going to be a little bit different from my normal snake oil review video. So if you are expecting such a video, you might want to check out a different video from me. Because I really want to talk about a very interesting situation I've been in lately. And also in general talk about testing of plugins and audio equipment. So let's get started. I am not really a plugin tester, or well, I am on YouTube, but apart from that, I'm, I, I don't really test plugins outside of YouTube. But when I did pretty thoroughly test plugins, I usually found a lot of issues and had a lot of feedback, and I was very detailed about it. I really took my time to, you know, tell the developers what I thought of a plugin, and usually, really often. Nothing happened with it. And it's really interesting to see how things work in the plugin industry. Definitely in the plugin industry. In the equipment industry, hardware equipment industry, things are more normal. But still, it's also going on there, just a bit less. Because if you want to, you can push out a plugin in like a few days, really. Creating a plugin is not hard. However, creating a good plugin is actually really hard to do. And if we look at two industry leading companies like FabFilter and Sonable, I mean, there are more companies, but not all of them are industry leading because a lot of them are reusing old algorithms, which might be good, but it's not really leading. Anyway, but if you look at like those leading companies, they usually only release a plugin like once or twice every year. And for a good reason because it takes a lot of time and effort to create a really good plugin. And what I've noticed is that there is a split in reason why plugin products usually aren't that good or aren't improving. The first reason is, is pretty logical actually. It's a lack in knowledge and skills. And this is usually a thing with smaller developers, independent developers that are just limited in their skills but also it also in their resources i mean if you're doing everything yourself there's only a certain amount of time in a day that you can work on your product and oftentimes these people are very passionate about what they're doing and really want to make the best product but you know they're limited and reviewing a product from that category is it's difficult because i do like products made out of passion but if it's not really a good product, not really a quality product, it's in the end not going to help the user and you, my viewer. So as much as I like the passion, I cannot sell the product. I cannot recommend the product in front of my viewers because it's just not good. However, the people behind it usually have the best intentions, which I cannot necessarily say for my second reason why companies do not make the best product. And the second reason is uh, what I call corporate BS. And this is something that you see happen in larger plugin companies or you know companies in general. And what I really see in those type of companies is that the focus has shifted. So usually it has started with you know a founder that made really good products. And the focus now has shifted from making good product towards making money. And I mean, making money, there's nothing wrong with that. It is inherently something that is connected with running a business. But the focus should be on creating a good product and not trying to make as much money as possible. Because what I believe in is that if you make a good product, the money will always follow. Just focus on the product. So the company is focused on making money. And what I see in corporate businesses is that the people that work for those businesses are, again, not focused on the product, but they are individually focused on their next promotion. So there is a lot of air and fairy dust and stuff going on, but the product itself often gets forgotten. And if they get a little bit of user feedback, it's usually being dismissed because, you know, working on the development of the product costs money. And that's the opposite of the thing that they, they want. They want to make more money and not spend more. And unless, of course, a YouTuber or another public figure really shows off flaws in a product or really shows, you know, something that is not done right. Then all of a sudden they do take action because, you know, if people stop buying the product, they're not making money anymore. And that's, that's their, that's their goal. And 
sometimes the action that they are going to take is improving the product. But what I see more and more often, unfortunately, is instead of improving the product, they're just going to attack the reviewer with statements and comments that are being a little bit twisted. Also, audio demos that are being twisted, sometimes even manipulated, to show why the reviewer was not right. While what we reviewers usually try to do is also include some objective either measurements or demos or whatever to show of the actual flaw. And it's kind of weird that we are being attacked. And I've seen a few situations from the past, not only myself, but also uh, a few other uh, YouTubers of which I know about. Um, but what I do dare to say is that the mission of most of the people on social media is really trying to move the audio business forwards and really try to enforce better products for all of us. That That's just our mission. It's not, we don't want to harm anybody. We just want to see better products. But because of this stuff going on, the products are not being improved. And the reason why I and, you know, other influencers or however you want to call it, I find influencer to be a very disturbing term. But anyway, the reason why we... We do it in the public domain. It's because usually more change can be made. However, I did get contacted by the people from Music Hack. They basically asked me if I wanted to make a review of their unreleased plugin. So, of course, make the review of an unreleased plugin and release it when the plugin gets released. But they also shared their concern of me not liking their plugin. And... When talking with them, I noticed that they are really of the first category. The really passionate people that can lack a little bit of knowledge and skills, but generally are really passionate about the thing that they're making and really believe in the product that they're making. So the product comes first. So what I did is something I've never done before, is I made a deal with them, which I think was okay to do since the plugin wasn't being sold at that moment. It gets different when a plugin is already out there and being sold and focuses on the money. So here's the deal that I made. I would make a video about their plugin in the state that it was as normal and I would share all of my concerns that would come up in that video with them if there would be any concerns of course. Then if they would choose to improve the plugin before releasing it to the rest of the world I would discard that old video and film a new one. However and this is a bit of pressure that I used in order to protect well basically my own time if they would choose to ignore my comments, I would release the initial video to all of you. And luckily, they chose the first option of, you know, just solving the issues with the plugin. And with that, they've shown me that they really want to make a very good product. And of course, the question is like, hey, did you find a few things? And the answer is yes, and we're going to talk about that. But I also found a few things that I disagreed on. So it's not objectively wrong, but I just disagreed. And we've discussed this a little bit. It was very interesting. And basically everything is solved and cleared up now. I just want to take a quick look at that plugin right now. It's called Master Plan. And the first thing that I had an issue with uh, is their statement of crystal clear, stupid loud, Asterix. And their asterisk stands for we do not endorse the loudness wars but if you do happen to get into a war and it's about loudness you will win. And I have a lot of issues with that statement. First of all you know there's a reason why I designed a t-shirt with the streaming standards on it because I think that makes more sense than just going super loud. Second of all I don't think that there are ever winners in a war. Like this gets a bit, little bit philosophical, but usually a war only has losers. And with loudness war, I think it's the same thing. There isn't really a winner. Maybe on the short term, but on the long term, it's just bad for music. I think, my opinion. However, their observation was that they're still seeing a lot of requests for loud masters, loud mu loudness war stuff. And that they included it in the plugin just because of that. And the plugin really is... It can be loud if you want to, but it can also comply to streaming standards. Actually, they adjusted their presets so that it is more capable of um, uh, streaming because I commented about that. What we agreed upon is that it's most important that people are taking an educated decision on this. Because I have no problem with you making a loud track as long as you are aware of the reasons why 
you shouldn't do it. If you then still decide to make a loud track, then it's okay with me. But if you're just doing it uneducated, like that's that's a bit of an issue. Like I think education is really important. Anyway, so this is the plugin. As I said, I did have a special deal with them, but I'm not, you know, getting any money for this or whatever. I try to stay as independent as possible. Uh, if you appreciate that, make sure to check out my affiliate links. I'll link them over here. So this is it. And what this thing actually is in the background is it it, it has a few fixed presets there isn't a lot of anticipative processing happening how i think this plugin came to be is that the people that made this uh, really wanted to create their own simplified version of a mastering chain with simpler controls so everything that's in here are fixed curves and fixed colorations saturations all the kind of stuff there's no anticipative processing in here which is you know a bit weird but i i do find where they're coming from and as long as you know for buying you know what you're getting and um, it's all okay. I personally like to have more control, so I, I just, you know, I would never buy a plugin like this, but I can really imagine uh, situations where you would love to have such a plugin. So let's run some audio through it. Let me quickly talk you through the different, um, different options in here. I have to say that I have it set to Unity Gain. I really like working with plugins in Unity Gain. Actually, my complete mixing and mastering workflow is all Unity Gain now. And it's really cool to always work in, in you know, a fixed Unity Gain level, but that's something for a different video. As you can see here, you can increase the loudness and you can see that the, our lust measurement goes up from there. Pretty simple and behind the scenes there's like some uh, limiting clipping. It's actually interesting stuff that they're doing behind the scenes there. It's I, I don't know if other uh, plugin makers are actually doing it like that. Anyway, we can then, you know, add some saturation. We can increase the intensity of the clean po processing. Oh, that's actually, actually a big difference already. And saturation. And again, this is a mastering plugin. So don't expect like huge distortion coming out of this or something. There's a little multi-band compressor in here as well. And again, everything is gain compensated. Which is like really cool because now you're he really hearing what you're doing. There's also smooth, which is like pre-compression. In here is a limiter. And when adding some compression before that, um, you're you're just not hitting the limiter that hard. You're you're really pre-compressing your stuff. Then we have a feature called Calm, and I've been discussing this with them a lot because what Calm basically does, I think I can show this best in Plugin Doctor. I'm not a huge fan of using Plugin Doctor anymore because um, usually what Plugin Doctor shows is pretty flawed, actually. For this, with a linear analysis, I think I can show this. Calm basically cuts out a few frequencies that are usually perceived as being harsh. And it's basically just, you know, two, two of those notches or more of them if we use the 2x button. It's something that I I wouldn't go for a fixed fixed EQ setting for this. I would cut it out by hand, but I'm I'm really a, a manual manual type of person. So yeah, because I think that the frequency 4K and you know the harmonics of 4K, it's not always 4K. It can also be a different frequency. That's that's just you know how, how I like to work. Also, they have some analog tape modeling in here. And if we look at these features together, it's a bit like how, how normally a mastering chain uh, uh, looks and works. So it's it's really, you know, a certain flavor that they made. And, you know, after all the things that I complained about it and they, they included in it, which which had to do a lot with the love settings and, uh, you know, true peak presets that they are now including and that kind of stuff. I actually think that this is, you know, if you're looking for a plugin that does this, I think this is a pretty cool one to check out and try out yourself. Plugins like these are really like 
a car, it has to fit your preferences and fit your mixing style and that kind of stuff. And with a car, it's the same thing. Like if you if you need to haul a lot of a lot of equipment, a lot of stuff, it's better to buy a van. But if you're just you know caring about transporting yourself, you can also buy a pink Suzuki, which I drive. So it has to fit, and that's also why there is there is like a five day trial for this plugin. Now the last thing that I had a very interesting conversation about with the people from Music Hack is about oversampling because there is oversampling in this plugin. If I'm not mistaken, it's four times oversampling, uh, which is already quite a lot. Like it's, it's not huge distortion that it's creating or something. However, when testing, there was a little bit of aliasing and a little bit of, of stuff of which I'm not sure if it's actually really audible. And this is something that I, that I really love is that, that they are looking into the oversampling features, higher oversampling uh, options, and also oversampling filters because oversampling is not that simple it's 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 a very difficult thing to get right because it's about increasing the sampling rate but it's also about cutting off uh filtering off the high frequencies after sampling back to the original sampling rate anyway they're looking in into all of those things and whenever they can improve that they will come with a software update for this plugin so later on it could happen that this plugin gets extra features that could make it sound better and those are the things that I really like. That's that's really a mentality that every plugin man manufacturer should have. Anyway, if you want to know if this plugin is suited for you, check out. I'll link to them in the description down below. And I would love to hear uh, your thoughts on it. So come back to this video after you've tested it and let me know if this thing suits you or not. Because again, for me, I, I like to have uh, all the controls and I, I, I'm a control freak. I would just love to hear that because I, I don't know. <laughs> Now, if you liked this video, sorry it was a bit long, consider supporting me by uh, becoming a channel member. You can do that using the join button down below. However, when you're on an iPhone, you have to go to the YouTube website. It doesn't work in the app for some stupid app store reason. Anyway, if you don't want to become a member, but want to support the channel by watching more content, I'll link an interesting video over here. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks a lot for watching. Keep pushing and bye bye.